Terrifically tasty tomatoes encapsulate the pure joy of summer in a sweet and juicy package. They're a must grow for any gardener because of the delicious taste when freshly picked. But whether you're coming at this for the first time or are here for a few tips to up your gardening game, I've got you covered. Today we'll be lifting the lid on all you need to know to get your tomatoes off to a flying start. Welcome to our tomato planting masterclass. I reckon tomatoes give us the biggest range of varieties of any crop we can grow, testament to our love affair with this stunning plant. You've got cherry types, varieties for salads, great big beef tomatoes the size of an ox's heart, and paste tomatoes with lots of fine flavoured flesh for transforming into the most delicious sauces. Some varieties are best suited for growing in warmer climates or in a greenhouse, while others will cope just fine outside, even in notoriously fickle climates like mine. My advice is just to read the variety descriptions with care to make sure it's suitable for your intended growing space and use. And then there's the growing habit. Whether your tomatoes are sturdy bush types, officially known as determinate tomatoes, or lanky vining types, the indeterminates. More on the difference shortly, but first, let's sow. Tomatoes are tender souls. As a warm season crop, they prefer to not tolerate chilly weather, and they certainly can't be doing with frosts. So my advice is to start them six to eight weeks before your last frost date, so they remain manageable sized plants right up till planting time. And you can find out when your last frost date is by just entering in your postcode or zip code into the garden planner, and you can take advantage of our free trial, which I will link to in the description below. It's getting a little bit late in the day to be sowing tomatoes, but I thought I'd make just one last sowing, and I've chosen a really prolific hanging basket tomato here. Claims to produce hundreds to thousands of tomatoes over the summer, so let's put it to test, shall we? So I'm just going to use a normal all-purpose potting mix here, but because it's a little bit lumpy in places, I'm just going to pass it through this little sieve or screen here, just to kind of get a nice smooth kind of end result to sow into. There we are. Probably actually just fill it up most of the way and finish with the uh, the fine mix. That's a bit more efficient, isn't it? All right. There we go. And then pass it down. And then I'm just going to spread the individual seeds nice and evenly over the surface. So I'm going to sow about, I don't know, six or seven seeds here. These are fresh, so they'll definitely come up. Most of them will come up. There we go. And then take the time to pick one individually and just space them half an inch or so, or one centimetre across the surface like this and then we'll just lightly cover them over once we're done. Then once you've spread your seeds over, just a tiny bit more of the potting mix like that over the top. Now being warm season plants, tomatoes like a nice warm and cosy environment to germinate. We're looking for an ideal temperature of 70 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius. So the best place for that, for me, is indoors. Now, you can, sorry Rosie, just out of the way darling, good girl. Well, I'll bring this up. You could put this inside like a little um, humidity dome like this to keep things nice and cozy like that, and that'll create a nice kind of warm micro uh, environment. Or, if it's just one individual pot, I just prefer to take a clear bit of plastic like this over the top, and then secure that in place with an uh, elastic or rubber band like that. Now this will go on a warm windowsill indoors. If you've got a heat mat, that little bit of bottom heat will really get things going faster, but that's really not essential. Warm sunny windowsill would do just fine. Once the seedlings are up, keep them in a warm, bright position to grow on. Earlier in the season in late winter, that might mean putting your seedlings under grow lights, but as spring progresses, any bright windowsill will do. That's great for about a week or so, but as they get a little bit bigger, try to move them somewhere that gets more even light from all sides. It'll stop the seedlings leaning to one side, though you can always rotate the pots to keep the seedlings growing more straight. But for me, that means moving my little tomato seedlings out here as soon as possible once it's warm and safe to do so. 
So I've just made some sowings and I've got these guys here that we're going to plant out shortly. I want to show you the next stage though of what to do with the seedlings. I haven't got any that I've sown but these guys have cropped up here, popped up from last year. They're volunteer tomatoes that have just come where the tomatoes have sown. So, well, these will do just the job to demonstrate with. Now, I could actually use these. These are of a cherry variety and, uh, well, they'd be just as strong and good as the ones I've sown. So, let me show you. So, I've got the seedlings out and then I just carefully, really carefully kind of tease them apart like that. And look at that. There's the actual old tomato skin on the bottom. Anyway, then I'm using a little stick or chopstick or whatever to make a hole, then always handle the seedling by its leaf, never the delicate stem, and then just pop it in and go right up to the lowest leaves like that. Now I've got my pots already pre-filled with potting mix. That means that there's no delay in getting the seedlings into their new homes. There's no risk of them drying out or whatever. And I like to transfer my seedlings like this as soon as possible, while they're still very small, as you can see here. They're pretty good at just being transferred while they're young. There's no advantage to letting them get bigger because as they're smaller, they're easier to get into the holes. Now I'm setting these seedlings quite a bit lower as I said, right up to the lowest leaves. And that's because uh, tomatoes have an amazing ability to produce new roots right the way up the length of their stem. And so by setting them a little bit lower, you're gonna get more roots, which will create a stockier, sturdier plant. It also means if you've got really lanky seedlings, you can kind of correct it by setting them lower and getting them back on track. Tomato seedlings are very forgiving like that. Come on, darling, this way. Good girl. There we are, they're all pricked out or transferred into their own pots. The last thing to do is give them a bit of a drink. Now, don't worry, they might look a bit bedraggled, but they'll soon perk up. Now, these can be kept anywhere sheltered from the cold, so a greenhouse, cold frame, plant house, even outdoors in a warm and sheltered spot, so long as they're brought indoors on chilly nights. But now at this time of year, for me, they're absolutely fine out here. I find that tomatoes are surprisingly resilient and will put up with a little bit of chill, but don't push your luck. You definitely don't want them to get frosted. And here are some that I uh, transplanted into their own pots about sort of four to six weeks ago. And you can see they're coming along really nicely. Just different varieties, hence the different sizes, but they're all growing incredibly fast now it's finally warmed up. It's been a bit cooler out here than inside the house, but I find that the extra light more than compensates for that. Now, if you're not quite ready to plant them into their final positions, then you can just pot them on, and it's very simple. Take the tomato out of its pot, get a bigger pot, and then set it right at the bottom. Now, remember I said that they produce roots all the way along the stem. Well, you can set them again quite deep like this. Just nick off these little seedling leaves. And that'll just help us to create that stockier, sturdier plant. And you can do this at every stage of the potting on or planting out process. Just set your tomatoes nice and deep. However, the rest of them are good to plant. So let's get on and do that now. If you are planting your tomatoes outside, then you'll need to harden them off before planting. That just means getting them used to acclimatizing them to the outdoor conditions. They hate being in a cold, chilly draft, and we need to get them toughened up, ready for the big outdoors. Now, the way to do that is simply on a mild day like today, bring them outside, leave them outside for as long as it's mild, and then bring them inside at night. And then the next day, leave them out for a little bit longer, and so on over the course of around a week. These guys here are gonna stay in the greenhouse so there's no hardening off necessary. And I'm gonna be planting three types today. I've got a cherry tomato, a paste or plum tomato for sauces, and then a really good general uh, tomato for slicing that's also really blight resistant. Let me show you how I'm gonna grow them though. I'm gonna plant them into the greenhouse beds here and I'm gonna use this simple string supports here, which I've tied onto a horizontal wire up here. Now this is really, really tough stuff. 
and that's important because it's got to support the weight of our tomatoes. Now at this point I should probably explain the difference between indeterminate or vining tomatoes and bush or determinate tomatoes. All of the tomatoes I'm going to grow in the greenhouse are indeterminate or vining tomatoes. That means they don't grow to a predetermined height. They just carry on growing up and up until cold weather ends play later on in the autumn. Now because they keep on growing, they keep on flowering and producing fruits in a more continuous and steady flow. So you'll always have something to pick once they get started. Now they do need good supports. In the wild, they just kind of trail along the ground, but by growing them up supports, we'll get a much better crop. I'm gonna plant my tomatoes about 45 centimeters or 18 inches apart. And I'm just gonna dig a nice hole for them here, pop it out, and then I'm gonna thread the string underneath the root ball. So that's gonna get planted as well. There we go, that just secures it in place. Pop that in and then remember to feed it in so we're burying some of the stem as well so we get another chance of creating that really strong plant. Now you might notice I've got some salad leaves in front here. They won't interfere, they'll grow nice and low. They're only gonna be in here for another kind of six weeks or so and this will grow up so they're not gonna get in each other's way. Now I should tell you how I prepared the soil here. I just added some really well rotted uh, manure, in fact, at the end of winter. Just dumped it on and spread it out to about, oh, about an inch, inch and a half or three to five centimetres deep. And then uh, that's done the job. Now, if you haven't had a chance to spread organic matter yet onto your soil, don't worry, this, just get it on now and uh, just make sure it's well rotted garden compost would be ideal and that will just give a really good strong basis to start fueling that growth. I also like to grow cucumbers against string supports like this and if you missed last week's cucumber growing masterclass video which shows all of that then I will link to that down below. Now I've also had really great fun growing tomatoes in straw bales. It was like alchemy, transforming a crispy dry bale into the perfect raised bed. And that had all sorts of fruiting crops in it. So if you'd like to see that video too, I'll also link to that one. Another option is hanging baskets, of course. Now they dry out really quickly, so you'll need to watch them really, really carefully. You can mix in water retaining gel to hang on to moisture for longer, or pop a saucer into the bottom of the basket to help trap some of that excess water. However, if you're in a very hot, dry or windy climate, they may be more effort than they're worth and you may want to avoid them. Staking or supporting plants is essential. It keeps plants upright, making the best use of space. It'll dramatically reduce the chances of soil-borne diseases or fruits rotting on damp ground. There'll be fewer pests and looking after the plants is so much easier because everything's elevated and you can see what you're up to as you tend your crop. I'm using string supports in here because, well, it's very convenient and they're very quick to set up. But like I've said, just make sure it's nice and strong. Outside you could use strong posts or battens. You could also use bamboo canes, but do be mindful that plants can get really heavy under the weight of fruit, so there's a risk of them snapping, so proceed with caution. Whatever you're using, definitely tie your plants in at regular intervals right the way along the length of the stem. This reduces the risk of any weak spots and plants snapping under the weight. Another option is a tomato cage, and I've made this one very simply using uh, stock fencing or cattle fencing you could use, and I've just cut it down to the right uh, width and then used the ends of the wire to weave it all together. Now I've given myself a final diameter of around 18 to 24 inches, which is 45 to 60 centimeters. That should support your plants nicely. And then to help pin it to the ground, I've weaved in these lovely uprights of hazel, just woven them in and out, and then got them protruding at the ground, so I'll stab these into the ground once we're done. But first, we need to plant. And for that, I'm going to use an outdoor tomato that also happens to be blight resistant. And that's really important, because 
my tomatoes always get clobbered with blight out here. So this way I'll uh, get something even when it does strike. But before I plant, come here, I've got something pretty interesting to show you. What we've got here are grafted plants. You can see that the bottom is different from the top. Well, the bottom is a really vigorous rootstock. It confers a lot of energy and growth and vim to the variety which has been joined onto it. We've essentially got two plants in one. I've got a really strong, powerful plant here. It's kind of like the high performance supercar of the plant world. I'm not into my fast cars, but I am into my fast plants. They're a little bit more expensive, but the extra energy you'll get and the bigger harvest makes it well worth it. Tomato cages are perfect for growing um, determinate or bush tomatoes. And these types of tomatoes are ideal for those people just starting out. Now, unlike indeterminate tomatoes, determinate ones have a predetermined height that they grow to, hence the name. Now, because of that, they make much more compact plants and are a lot easier to look after. They grow to a height of maybe uh, three foot maximum, which is about a metre, so kind of waist height. And that means they need less in the way of support. Because they grow to a predetermined height, they naturally bush out. So they don't need any pruning. You just plant them and leave them to do their thing. This makes them more manageable and ideal for gardeners with a limited space. Determinate plants also tend to produce their fruits in more of a concentrated period all at once. This is great if you want a sudden glut of fruits that you can then process in a batch, for example, to make sauces. I should just add that with these grafted plants here, I'm taking great care not to cover the union where they're joined, otherwise the variety might root and then that will override the rootstock and we, we don't want that. I reckon these tomato cages don't look too bad actually and uh, you can buy these of course but this is a lot cheaper and uh, you know a fraction of the price and they do the job just as well. Now it will work really well because it'll hem the plant in as it grows so if it did flop to one side then it's nicely supported here by the walls of our cage. There we are. With their demand for a warm, sunny position and well-drained soil met, you can bet your bottom tomato that they'll soon rapidly grow. Now from experience, I can find that recent transplants can sometimes sulk. The leaves may roll up and the leaves can even turn purple in colour when it's a little bit chilly. But as soon as it's a little bit balmier, well, they'll be off. Recently planted tomatoes need a really thorough soaking to settle them in. Then as they start to grow on, well, it's important to keep them well watered. What we're aiming for here is consistency. So when it starts to get dry, just stick a finger into the soil an inch or two deep and check how moist it is. If it's dry, give it a really good soaking. Don't just wet the surface, really puddle it in so the water gets down nice and deep. Once plants begin to flower, I will start feeding them with an organic liquid tomato feed applied according to the instructions and I'll water it at the base of the plant to avoid wetting the leaves. We'll be revisiting these tomatoes in another four weeks when I'll be bringing you our next tomato growing masterclass. In it we'll be covering more on watering, lots on how to prune tomatoes and lots of clever tips to dodge pests and how to get superior tasting tomatoes every time. But if you just can't wait, well, check out this video next. I'll catch you next time.